welcome back to another video from the Block IoT. Today's video is part 5 of our IoT Masterclass series and I hope you have been able to follow along and build your IoT system to learn more about IIoT or Industrial Internet of Things. If you recall from the previous video, we added a Siemens Unified Comfort Panel to our project and used Node-RED to communicate with our MQTT broker which is running on our Raspberry Pi 5 and I think it was a great demo demonstration to show you how you can use industrial data over MQTT on different devices. So until now, we have had a Siemens HMI as I mentioned in the previous video, we had a 1217 CPU or PLC and we used a couple of analog inputs to generate some random data and send them over to the MQTT broker running on our Raspberry Pi 5 test server. In today's video, we are going to add another hardware, which I recommend to get one if you don't have already, because in my opinion, it's very important and crucial to learn both hardware and software at the same time. A perfect software cannot do anything without a good hardware and vice versa. So don't focus only on the software if you are going to work on IoT project. An IoT project is not merely software and fancy dashboard and complicated networks and so on. Everything is starts from a good hardware and understanding how the hardware works. So as you may know, there are different hardware or development boards that lets you connect your software or IoT platform to the real world. Today we are going to use a Raspberry Pi Pico W. This tiny board has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth embedded into it, but there is no operating system like Linux or Windows or anything else. This is a bare metal and microcontroller based board. But it is a very low cost and powerful option if you just want to test your system and overall learn about IoT. Of course there are many other boards and I will try to introduce them in the future videos but for now let's just focus on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. If you are new to Raspberry Pi Pico it's important to know there are different versions of this board one of them doesn't have any Wi-Fi. There is another version that already comes with the headers already soldered to the board, but it is important to get a Wi-Fi version for this project. There are tons of video about this product and different type of development boards. So I'm not going to repeat those information. And the Raspberry Pi also has a great documentation for all the products. So you can just go and check them out. For example, you can know what's the processor, which is basically a dual core ARM Cortex M0 processor with up to 133 megahertz. It has 26 multifunctional GPIO pins and to SPI, I square C and so on. So it's basically a standard microcontroller with Wi-Fi connectivity. Every pin has its own purpose and you can use it for different things. In this video, we are going to use two analog inputs. So let's switch the camera and look at one of these Raspberry Pi Pico W's in real world. Is what a Raspberry Pi Pico W looks like. There are tons of video on YouTube and different platform that reviews these boards and explain them into the detail. But we are just using this board as a test PLC or test uh, controller with some analog inputs and digital output and inputs and so on. And of course, we are using the Wi-Fi functionality to connect this board and transfer the data to our Raspberry Pi 5, which is running our Mosquito MQTT broker. And from there, you can consume those data anywhere that you want. So using these boards is pretty easy. You can program them in different ways, but using MicroPython or C or C++ are two common ways to program these boards. Okay, to get it started, all you need is a micro USB cable, and you can connect this to your computer to start the programming. And in this video, we are using a potential potentiometer which is connected to one of the analog inputs and also the embedded temperature sensor which is already available on this board and you can just read the data. Also we have an LED which is connected to one of the digital output pins and this LED for sure it could be an actuator like solenoid valve or a hydraulic jack or just a simple light. Also, we have added this display, which is just a HDMI display to show our graph on a dashboard on this small touch panel. Again, if you haven't followed along, please watch the previous videos to understand what we have done so far. But just to summarize, we have a test server, which is a Raspberry Pi 5, and this is running Grafana for data visualization. We have installed Python for running some script to interact with our InfluxDB database. And also we have a Siemens 
CPU, which we wrote a program to send the data from the PLC to the MQTT broker running on a Raspberry Pi 5 using a library called LMQTT. So let's just get it started how we can use this Raspberry Pi Pico W to write our first program and integrate this device to our current project. Okay, in this project we are going to use MicroPython to program the Raspberry Pi Pico W but as I mentioned you can use C or C++ to do the same thing. So I already connected to my programming machine which is using an Ubuntu operating system. So in this project we are going to use an ID called Thunny which is a very basic Python ID for beginners but you can still do a lot of things with it. If you want to program your Raspberry Pi Pico W with C or C++ you have to use the Arduino IDE instead. Of course, there are different add-ons and plugins for Visual Studio Code, and you can program it with that as well. But for now, let's just open Thunny and see what program do we have. So here is the MicroPython program that we prepared to read one of the analog inputs of our Raspberry Pi Pico W, as well as the integrated temperature sensor on our Raspberry Pi Pico W, and then we publish this data to our MQTT broker running on our Raspberry Pi 5 server. Again, this might look a bit complicated if you are new into this world, but there are tons of simple application examples and tutorials and getting a started document from the Raspberry Pi or other online instructors. So let's just quickly look at the program and see what different parts do. So first of all, as you know, you have to import the modules that you're using in your program. To use the GPIO pins such as ADC or analog to digital converter, you just need to import the machine module. To use the MQTT protocol, you need to import this MQTT.simple module. There are other options, but the MQTT simple package works as good as you need. By the way, you can manage your packages by going to the tools menu and manage packages. Also, we are importing the socket package because we are hosting a very tiny web server on our Raspberry Pi Pico W and this was taken from the application example available on the Raspberry Pi website. So after importing the required packages in your program, you just need to configure your pins. So here I have configured the pin number 15 to be an output and also I've defined the, this variable called ADC which is connected to pin number 28 which is an analog input. And then we are just defining different variables which contain different strings and the first of all is the IP address of our MQTT server and we need different client IDs. You could simply generate these based on random numbers but I just hard coded and have a static values for troubleshooting purposes. And of course we need to define our MQTT topics that we want to subscribe to or publish to. To connect to a local Wi-Fi network you need to enter the SSID and also the password for your Wi-Fi network. And then we have different functions that do different things. The first function which is called MQTT Connect connects to the MQTT broker and once the connection established successfully we get a message which is called connected to the MQTT broker. We have created another function to subscribe to different topics and you can pass the topic name to this function. The next function connects to the Wi-Fi network based on the credential that we just provided. So again I didn't reinvent the wheel I just used the existing codes available on Raspberry Pi website and as I mentioned we are going to host a tiny web server on Raspberry Pi Pico W. That's why we are opening a socket here and then we start to listen on this port to answer different requests that are coming from different browsers. In the next section we are just defining our HTML file which is shown when a user enters the IP address of Raspberry Pi Pico W in a web browser. This is the front end of our web server which I just mentioned and we have an infinite loop under this while true. Inside this infinite loop we are just checking or subscribing to different topics. We read the value of ADC or analog to digital input and also the integrated temperature sensor on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And we simply pass this information to our web server to show on the front end. Okay, after downloading the code to the Raspberry Pi Pico W, we can start using the program. So to download, simply click on this button and that's it. So let's just switch the camera and see how it works. <music> 
here's a quick look at the projects page on the Raspberry Pi website. So as you can see, there is a detailed instruction to show you how you can build a web server to visualize the integrated temperature sensor and also send some commands from the web browser to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay, let's explore different data on our Mosquito MQTT broker running on our Raspberry Pi 5 using the MQTT Explorer software. As you can see here, we have two new topics. One is Pico W1 Temp, which stands for temperature, and also one Pico W1 Pot or potentiometer. So if I rotate the potentiometer, you will instantly see the changes in the MQTT broker. So I just reduce the value and I just increase it and also for the temperature for sure right now is that's just the room temperature I don't think it's very accurate but it is acceptable for testing and from the previous project we have this temperature one topic which represents one of the analog inputs of our PLC so if I just change the value you can instantly see the changes so let's just open our graph on a dashboard that we created in the previous videos and just a recap with IP address and port number 3000 for Grafana. Just do a refresh. And as you may notice, I have added four different visualizations, two new gauge objects to visualize the real time value of temperature sensor and also the potentiometer. And also we have a historical data representation of these two values. And for sure, we have the temperature value from the previous videos. So let's just do some tests and make sure everything works. So we start from the PLC. Let's just change the potentiometer to inject some test data to our PLC analog inputs. So as you can see, I'm just decreasing. Let's just make it zero. And let's just eventually increase the value. Okay, I think we have enough test data on the PLC input. Let's just change the potentiometer value. So right now it's just on the maximum value. Let's just decrease it. I'm just randomly changing it up and down to get more test data in our InfluxDB time series database. And let's look into the dashboard, the like same dashboard on our seven inch display. And as you can see, that's the beauty of MQTT. You can share the data easily between different devices. And a lot of embedded system also support this protocol these days. So if you are thinking to develop a new product or you just want to add this protocol to your product, it's not that complicated anymore. So I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any question getting started with your Raspberry Pi Pico W, let me know. And thank you again for your time. And until the next video, have a great day or night.